I mean, you're saying that you're going to stop to it. It's not okay. It's absolutely not okay. Don't worry. What? I don't even know what you're talking about. Make mistakes, all right? I'll tell you what. You want your money back. It's not happening. No, it's not going to be for the money. I mean, it's for the business. I'm actually helping you. I didn't mean that. I had nothing to do with that. This is exactly why that is what I already have planned. Because you didn't have to get the money. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah,
her husband, didn't you know that Michael and Ginger was a disaster waiting to happen? He didn't like her. He wanted her to go away. And then the murder-suicide of Michael and Ginger. Legally, I can't blame you for that murder-suicide of Michael and Ginger, but someone else can, and maybe for another suicide too. But I digress. Number two, who was the serial killer who goes around poisoning people? Now we've known since the very beginning when that crime alert came out that the FBI has been after this nutcase. Bad enough we have this pandemic, COVID-19 killing people. Now we have a poisoner killing people. First down, Brendan Reynolds, killed by the poison aconite. Emily Thorne, who sang how life was a Charbonnet, killed by the poison aconite. Her surviving sister, Donna Thorne, who sang about how she wanted respect, killed by the poison aconite. Her crazy sister, Florence, who loved toilet paper, killed by the poison aconite. And finally, Kristen Huffmore, who sang about how Brendan made the earth move under her feet, but when he was gone, back on the dating sites, killed by the poison aconite. But when she was killed, the serial killer who's poisoning people was telling me and a certain someone with the FBI a message. That was evidence number 37. Here is my poem to the FBI. Every time I see you, someone will die. Catch me if you can, because I will kill some more. Poison makes it easy. Killing is not a chore. Well, at last, I think I may have found out who this serial killer may be. I don't want you out there to be misled by some of the things that we went through, like Kristen Huffmore's fake pregnancy and Brendan's relationship with his stepmother or that weird funeral director and his violinist, or even that weirder psychologist who tried to make you think that I was a serial killer, or like Dr. Jen and her naked cooking show, or the fact that she accused some of you guys of coming on to her, or some of you women sending threatening texts. Don't be misled by the illegal antics of former FBI agent Lola. She got something she didn't want with her illegal wiretapping, but I don't think that she was the only FBI agent here. Hmm. But I digress. Number three, who put a knife in the chest of Gareth Pursehouse, the sneaky assistant of Dr. Jen? He sleeps with her, he blackmails her, they fool around, but then he's found with a knife in his chest. Now, I got someone in this event who hires a hitman to kill Dr. Jen for some sort of family revenge. I have someone in this event who's a serial killer who likes to poison people. But I have someone else in this event, someone else who knifed Gareth Pursehouse. Evidence number 34, that note, all rats must die. Evidence number 38, the email from Psychology Today, it was you, you killed him. He was your lover, but he was gonna turn you in because your methods resulted in that suicide last year of an elderly loner who was being treated for family issues by you, Dr. Jen, and maybe even more. You killed Gareth because he was gonna turn you in. Isn't that right, Dr. Jen? Oh, very smart, Dorsey. That's right. I killed that macho wimp. He was gonna rat me out to those psychological quacks. No, my methods work. Just because some silly old man whose family wouldn't talk to him killed himself because I told him what a worthless piece of crap he was. <sighs> That's right, Gareth had to die. And now that you know that I killed him, you have to die. Put the gun down, put it down, put it and down. I can you save you from down. someone who's trying to kill you right here. Someone who wants you dead. And that someone is the person who hired the hitman to kill you. That person is here. That person is the daughter of that elderly man who killed himself. And that person is you, Carol Zakola. Very smart, Darcy, but this is a family affair. My family sucked. We were all treated by Dr. Jen and look what she did. My father, he kills himself. I sleep with my cousin's husband. She sleeps with my husband. More suicides and I'm not gonna be a suicide like them. Put the guns down. Put him down now. <laughs> oh, whoa, whoa. 
That was cool. Ain't I a great detective? No, I wouldn't say, I would say you're the dumbest. I'm Jennifer Moulet, FBI. Did you forget that there is still a serial killer on the loose? I couldn't care less about your stupid revenge cases, killing cases. That's why I was assigned here. There's a real sicko here who's poisoning people all over the country, and I... What? I, What's the matter? I, Poison? <laughs> Was you at last, huh? I found the serial killer. <laughs> Poison makes it easy, you know, killing's not a chore. And now, let me kill you with this knife. Put it down now. <laughs> well, now I'm a good detective. Ladies and uh, gentlemen, thanks to our brilliant detective work, we are all safe tonight. And if I'm not the best detective you've ever seen, the best detective in our audience was Jennifer Gravel. She is our winner. Jennifer, your check, your prizes is going to be on your way. But now, let me introduce our cast for tonight. First, Dr. Miranda Jen was played by Rory Nogi. There she is. As one of our killers, Carol Zakola, please help me to welcome Christy DeVoe. Hey, Christy. Dr. Jennifer Moulet, who's not a psychologist, but an FBI agent, Miss Kristen Gilmore. And our serial killer, Barbara Goodman, was played by Alyssa McQuigan. All right. All right, guys, you can stay on here if you want. Well, I thank the other actors who helped put this together. I want to thank Bob Ader as the funeral director, David Edwards as Dr. Diane. We also had Prudence Holm as Marina Reynolds, Marilyn Spanier as Dr. Scott, Hunter Frederick as Brendan Reynolds, John Nelson, Michael Whitaker, Cindy Costello as Emily Thorne, Rosalind Seal as Gwen Peskow, Darren Chumley as Gareth Pursehouse, Melissa Weisbach as FBI agent Lola, Carolyn Savio as Kristen Huffmore, Susan Mitchell as a funeral home violinist, Rhea Alexander as Donna Thorne, Kate Konekeiser as Florence Spangler, and me, I'm John Abner. And ladies and gentlemen, this is The Killing Company. Since 1993, we have been performing comedy murder mystery dinner shows for public and private events everywhere, but since the coronavirus, we haven't been performing anywhere. So we decided to do a virtual interactive murder mystery on Facebook where you can still be part of the show and be a detective and try and solve the, uh, the murder. Until we are back performing live, we're going to try to continue offering uh, online events. So stay with us. Our phone number is 1-888-SHOOT'EM or 212-772-2590. And our website is killingcompanycompanywithak.com. Thank you all for being a wonderful audience. Stay healthy, wear masks, be safe, and we will see you soon online and live. So everyone, thank you so much. Have a good night and God bless. Thank you. <laughs>